think I have to say my favourite ELT book is Drama Techniques for Language Learning by Alan Maley, who we, we just passed on the way up the stairs. Um, I think because I, I imagine most people would say the same thing when they answer this question, that um, at a certain point in your life something comes along which you think, wow, that's absolutely right. So, And I think that was the moment when I'd been teaching for a couple of years and um, the books we were using in those days in the 70s were pretty grammar oriented and, and, and restricting and all the things that now we know are not quite right, you know, you need to sort of open language out a little bit, even in a course book situation, even in the grammar oriented um, book. So Alan's book came along and it, it really showed up the need to break out from the kind of the all, all the parameters of, of teaching, all the grammar parameters, the vocabulary one, you know, to, to make it open in a way. And, and, and the introduction, to the, the, the activities are wonderful, but the introduction to the book is particularly wonderful because it, it, although people weren't going around saying, "Is this a pen?" to their students by this time, the fact of the matter was that a lot of um, a lot of how we present a new language was a little bit like that. You know, what am I doing? I'm flying, kind of stuff. And um, and Alan kind of tried to put some of these situations into context. You know, if you walked up to a, a London docker with a pen in your hand and said, is this a pen? Would he say, yes, it is, or would he smack you in the eye? So, you know, looking at the reality. So those little moments in that book, I thought, yes. And then the, the activities showed ways to um, allow your students to open up a bit, you know, within the confines of the fact that they were, you know, linguistically uh, limited, to give them the chance to spread out a bit. And I've, I've allowed that book to influence everything that I've ever done since, whether it's writing course books or sketches or whatever. What or who has had the biggest impact? Well, um, I could say some obvious names like Jeremy Harmer and Scott Thornbury, but what I think has had the biggest impact on this business, looking at it from you know 25 years of, of um, being in the business and more, is I think that the business now takes itself um, much more seriously as a business in terms of the training. The training is so much better, you know. Um, there are fewer and fewer cowboys around running language schools in most countries. There are still cowboy countries, which we won't name. But I think the fact is, compared with when I started, when backpackers used to roll up to some school somewhere in Spain or Greece and say, oh, can I, can I have a job teaching English? And, and then they would be put in front of a class who then had the most nightmare time because they didn't know what they were doing. So the, the fact that the business now takes itself a bit more seriously, particularly in terms of training, is a major factor. And I think the second major factor is the fact that publishers, you people, have to recognise that what people need is something quite sophisticated, user-friendly, and that looks very good. And this is something that doesn't happen with other subjects so much. Chemistry books, they might be very sophisticated for all I know, but they tend to be a bit drab looking. By and large, materials that look good uh, and uh, and have good content are great. And I always compare it to restaurants. You know, if, if, if you see a great facade on a restaurant, well, let's try it. You go in, the food's not good, you don't go again. You need, the book needs to look good. Uh, it has to have good content, otherwise people won't use it twice. Um, well, I'm really happy. Uh, I'm, I'm going to not answer that question quite directly. I think I'm actually planning a talk for next year called something like To Hell and Back, um, which traces the, um, the uh, movement of a teacher who starts off, as I did, with maximum uh, nerves, absolutely terribly nervous in front of students, who then made me feel very much at home. Their kind of warmth, and I was teaching in Spain, their warmth and friendliness and sincerity and hard work. They were nice students. They made me feel that I was doing okay. You then, in my case, move on to a, a, a kind of plateau of complete arrogance where you, you think you know it all. And, and then you suddenly realise it's all falling, it up and falling down around you. And I think the best thing is that, um, not that you knew it all 25 years ago, but looking back you think, well I hope I've, I've perhaps improved a little bit uh, in those 25 years.